Israel has banned the northern branch of the country's Islamic movement. Israel says it's all part of an effort to help fight what the West calls the war on terror. But Israeli Palestinians call it persecution to cover up Israel's security shortcomings. This is Inside Story. Hello there and welcome to the program. I'm Nick Clark. Israel's decision to ban the northern branch of the Islamic movement has stirred controversy among Israeli Palestinians as well as some members of the Israeli security establishment. The Islamic movement, which has a northern and a southern branch, says its aim is to contribute to and strengthen the social fabric of Muslims living in Israel. But the Israeli government sees it differently. Democracy must defend itself. It must defend itself from those who undermine it. The Islamic movement's northern branch in Israel undermines the state. The movement incites violence against innocent civilians and has close relations with the Hamas terrorist organization. And they undermine the state with the aim of replacing it with an Islamic caliphate. As the one responsible for the security of the state, I will not allow this, and therefore the cabinet led by me has decided to outlaw the Islamic movement's northern branch. We have nothing against Islam. We have nothing against the Muslim citizens of Israel, who enjoy full, equal rights. Most of them abide by the law. But we will definitely continue to act against those that incite, against those of them that encourage terror. Our aim is to prevent incitement that contributes to harming innocents. Well, Israel's Minister of Public Security, that's Gilad Erdan, echoed the Prime Minister's comments. He said the state of Israel must serve as an example and a spearhead in the struggle against extremist Islam, whose emissaries we saw butcher innocent people in Paris, New York, Madrid and Israel. Well, that link uh, the Israeli government is trying to make is what casts fear among Israeli Palestinians, critics of uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu say the timing of the decision is political with the ban announced right after the Paris attacks. The Islamic movement has never publicly aligned itself with any organization accused of carrying out attacks. The group has two branches, as I say, one in the north, one in the south. The one in the north is more conservative than its southern counterpart. It says it advocates for the protection of the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound and campaigns against any Palestinian concessions to Israel. The northern branch has been banned for what Israel calls its close ties to Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood. Sheikh Raid Salah is the leader of the group. He's been sentenced to 11 months in prison, accused of inciting violence. He has previously told Al Jazeera that the charges against him are politically motivated. So there we have it. For more of this, we're joined now by our guests in Nazareth, Muad Khatib, who's a member of the Islamic movement. In Jerusalem, we're joined by uh, Mitchell Barak, who's the founder of the Kiva Research Strategy and a communications consultancy. Uh, Mitchell has worked extensively serving as an advisor to many Israeli heads of state. Uh, also in Nazareth, Mohammed Zidane, director of the Arab Association for Human Rights. Gentlemen, welcome to you all. It's good to see you here for this uh, important discussion. Uh, Muad, if I could start with you in, in Nazareth. Um, as we alluded to there in the introduction, Prime Minister Netanyahu says there is a significant body of evidence uh, linking the northern branch of the Islamic movement uh, to Hamas. What do you say to that? Uh, thank you for having me. First, uh, let me please just uh, uh, express something I see very important here. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mitchell Barak, your guest from Jerusalem, is someone I recognize as a client of mine. I work in the translation industry, and I did uh, some work for him, and he actually praised it like no one ever did praise my work before. And here we stand as rivals today. Uh, I am uh, uh, against the decision of banning the Islamic movement, and he's apparently uh, wants to uh, promote and advocate it. And if, if, if this would indicate anything, I believe it indicates that we uh, 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 Arabs in general and the Islamic movement only want to live right and uh, 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 to uh, obtain our rights and to live in dignity and in freedom, nothing more. In relation to your question, um, uh, we as the, in the Islamic movement, or what used to be the Islamic movement before its ban, uh, 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 believe that it, this decision comes within the context of uh, uh, targeting the whole Arab community in Israel. Uh, there has been no single proof or concrete evidence against the Islamic movement that shows that and testifies that it is involved in one way or another in supporting 
what Netanyahu called terrorism or that it has links with Hamas or otherwise they, have, they would have presented those, those evidence. But in fact, Netanyahu uh, just wanted to uh, uh, exploit the recent uh, uh, tragic uh, uh, incidents in Paris and wanted to show the world that, look, we also have Muslim or Islamic extremists in Israel and their fate is the same as I, uh, ISIS or whatever it is called. But in fact, the Muslim the Islamic movement was the first, and its leaders were the first among the Muslims in the world who went to condemn uh, ISIL uh, and its atro atrocities against Syrians okay, before Europeans or citizens of Paris. Right, just, and the, uh, Mr. Netanyahu also saying that uh, the Islamic movement wa wants to, has designs on an Islamic caliphate. Is that true? The Islamic movement has it has a belief. It's a religious movement, and they believe that in some some time in history there would be a caliphate like it was before. But there is no uh, 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 link at all with ISIL or any other terrorist organization that uh, uh, that claims that it is a Muslim or that it uh, it uh, that it wants to. Uh, to bring about the, the establishment of the Caliphate. So there's absolutely no, no link or no connection between the Islamic movement or the so-called ISIL, uh, the um, uh, Islamic State in Iraq and the Levant. Uh, okay, let's uh, bring in Mitchell Baraka. Mitchell, I, I sense there's a certain amount of respect between you two, but uh, probably no agreement on, on this issue. What do you say to what Muad has been saying? Apparently there is no connection uh, between the Islamic oh. movement north and Hamas and ISIL and so forth. Well, well, I'll, well, I'll answer that. But first of all, uh, I did use his services as a translator. I gave him an excellent recommendation on LinkedIn, and I stand by that recommendation. He is an excellent translator, from Arabic to English, from Arabic to Hebrew. Very conscientious, very talented. So it's interesting that we can both work together and okay. be on the very opposite sides of this issue. Uh, so uh, back to your question, it may be that there is or is not a connection with ISIL, with Daesh, with uh, other organizations, and I don't think that that's the reason that the prime minister outlawed them. I mean, uh, Muad said well, that's what he that, said. yes, part of the movement's belief as a religious movement is, it, I, I know he, he just said it in the program, that one day there will be an Islamic caliphate here in Israel like there was in the past. No, 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 well, I mean, that, that's know, what Benjamin Netanyahu, Netanyahu said, Benjamin Netanyahu said that, didn't he? He said that he said that there was a link with Hamas. Uh, uh, okay, so you'll have to ask him. I'm not his spokesman. I'm not going to answer for him. I'm going to say that your other guest from Nazareth, Moad Kateb, said that yes, it is true uh, that we believe that one day there will be an Islamic caliphate, uh, uh, an Islamic caliphate here in what is Israel today. So it's not even a debate in democracy anymore. When you have an organization that says, we want to overthrow the government, or we imagine that one day there will be an Islamic caliphate here, and there won't be a government of Israel, and they don't participate in elections, and they don't recognize government institutions, uh, then that's really not part of the debate. But the connection with the Hamas is not what's, what, what, the outlaw, what was outlawed. It was not the main reason. I think the main reason that the prime minister felt so compelled is because a lot of this terror that's going on in the past six or eight weeks is based on incitement. And that incitement is coming out from the Islamic movement, specifically with the northern branch. And again, the Israeli government can separate between the northern and southern branch. The southern branch is okay. It's within the law. They participate. They vote. They're in the Knesset and so forth. The northern branch I mean, I can, I can read you from the Facebook post, from the articles of, of uh, Sheikh, uh, uh, of, of, uh, uh, of the Sheikh. We're going to redeem Al-Aqsa with blood. Now is the time for everyone to be called on an intifada, and even if it means martyrdom, it's time to meet Allah. All right, okay, well, we'll, we'll come on to Allah. He's things that are inciting, okay, Mitchell, we'll come inciting on to, a, to violence. Fine, we'll come on to al Aqsa in a moment or two. I just want to bring in, we haven't got much time in this program, so we need, it, we need to share the views around, but I will come back to you, of course. Uh, but Mohammed Zidane, what do you make of the timing of this announcement? I think we have to speak about the, uh, the whole context of this uh, decision, not just the timing. I agree that the timing is definitely linked to what's going around in the Arab world and what happened in the last week in, uh, in Lebanon, Beirut, and uh, in, uh, in Paris, which is something I think most of the Palestinian minority inside Israel, as most of the Palestinian people, have condemned and have raised clear voice against killing uh, innocent people. But let me uh, say, uh, at least from the, what Benjamin Netanyahu said, every democracy has the right to defend itself. But I think every democracy has an obligation to defend the right of its citizens, especially the minority, to 
uh, uh, to practice their politics and to enjoy their basic human rights as in, in democracy supposed to be. And when we speak about the right of organization, the right of freedom of expression, I think that the state of Israel for a long time have, have dealt with the Islamic uh, uh, movement, uh, especially the northest one. And in and, and your report, you, you, you actually quoted that uh, Sheikh Raid is going to spend some, some time in prison because of something he said or uh, uh, spoken. In principle, when you deal with a legal procedure in democracy, if you have any charges, if you have any, uh, uh, any, anything that you can bring against people, you bring them to normal uh, uh, legal procedure and you prove your charges and then the, uh, you can put people in jail. You cannot outlaw a political movement that represents tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people and make uh, uh, all their uh, uh, political uh, activism as illegal. In, in one decision, by the way, this is definitely a political decision. It's not a, a decision that come out of any legal uh, procedure. It was done on, uh, based on uh, uh, administrative uh, order uh, done by uh, polit politician, the Ministry of Defense. And it was uh, based on uh, the British mandatory law that existed much before even the existence of the State of Israel, which was even described by Israeli politicians as racist. Okay, as let racist me just law. come in Definitely there. Uh, what the about Mitchell, Mitchell Barak's view? He, he, made, he brought up the issue its of. implication on the rights of the whole minority. Okay, uh, yeah. What about Mitchell Barak's uh, point about the Al Aqsa Mosque? And, you know, central to all this it is the mosque area, and uh, they want the right to worship freely in holy places, of course. But uh, perhaps again, it was Sheikh again, Salah's think, call to defend Al Aqsa that didn't fall on deaf ears, and, and Mitchell will argue that, that caused excitement in its own way. I think, in principle, uh, any uh, human being would be against incitement in that way that leads to violence. But again, and I don't, I'm not saying that uh, they, they said this or they didn't say it, but I'm saying if the Islamic movement have said it, and Israel thinks that this is illegal, they can bring them to the court, to the normal procedure, do a legal procedure with, with, just, uh, with, with the right to defend themselves and to try to bring the proofs in a normal uh, uh, procedure that normal democracy would do. Uh, but the using uh, 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 you know, secret evidences and you, you're using administrative uh, orders definitely uh, uh, make it clear for the Palestinian minority uh, inside Israel that Israel is using uh, not legal and not democratic tools to silence this dissent. By the way, we didn't see these actions against settlers who not just spoken and, and they used violence. They burned family, they killed the child, they burned the child when he was alive. Israeli uh, uh, security uh, say that they know who burned the family, but they cannot bring them to justice in front of court because they don't want to disclose their evidence. Okay, let's, let's so bring it back to... Let's bring it back to... Let's bring it back to Muad Khatib now. Muad, Israel. we've got to move it on. Muad, um, tell me just before we, we go back to Mitchell, but tell me just exactly what the Islamic movement North does? What, what are its, its kind of social functions? Yeah, well, it, it has, the Islamic movement has lots and lots of uh, organizations and institutions uh, active uh, uh, on, you know, almost every field of the, of the Arab community's lives inside Israel. Now, we must remind everyone here that the Israeli government is, uh, is, is not giving the rightful rights to Arabs. I mean, there is lots and lots of uh, discrimination in terms of uh, budget allocations, uh, whether it's in, in education, in, in infrastructure. Uh, everywhere you would see that there is a discrimination in budgets. Now, the Islamic movement came to fill this gap. Now, there is, uh, uh, um, there is institutions for promoting education, for uh, uh, even uh, medical and health uh, uh, facilities and services. Uh, of course, not to mention the religious aspect and the, polit and the political as well as uh, uh, um, uh, social services. So let's mention, for instance, uh, the uh, Iqra Institution, which is basically an in institution for promoting and, and uh, developing education within the Arab community. Why? Because there is, again, a uh, lack of sufficient funding by the government because we are Arabs, so we don't uh, deserve uh, the... Uh, um, uh, what, what we deserve as citizens. 
Uh, so uh, the Islam movement uh, tries to fill those gaps. And because and the Sheikh Raid Salah's uh, uh, famous slogan was that we need to be a self-reliant community because uh, because the government is failing to provide us with uh, with uh, with you know the sufficient uh, sufficient needs. Okay, well, Mitchell, uh, so Mitchell Barak. Mitchell Barak. Let's, take, let's that put that to Mitchell Barak before we go on. Uh, so it seems as if uh, to me, even what we're hearing that, that uh, uh, the Islamic movement uh, north provides uh, um, fills gaps in the community. It actually provides a, a good social service. Uh, yeah, it's it's just a. Yeah, it's a great social welfare organization, except on their website in May 2014, it said, let us go together to Al-Aqsa Mosque and call Allah Akbar. The Muslims come day and night from the east and from the west, chanting, with spirit and with blood, we will redeem you, Al-Aqsa. Would you like some more quotes? I don't think you really need it, meaning I think that, that the Sheikh Saleh has said enough things about fighting the occupation, about martyrdom, about imagining uh, people meeting Allah from the Temple Mount, I think the incitement is enough. No, but, but, and a lot but of what Mitchell, we're seeing here in the last eight weeks but, but in sorry, Israel, the, the attacks that are carried out by everyone, and what we're seeing in Paris are people that are reacting to incitement. Now, the interesting thing is, if you remember in the beginning of my remarks, I, I separated between the northern Islamic movement and the southern Islamic movement in Israel, and I said, in the southern Islamic movement in Israel, they vote in elections, they're part of the Knesset. Okay. It's yeah, ludicrous you've made that, that point Moad already. can complain about, no, no, no that he can complain about financing and not getting budgets when they don't participate in the elections and they're not in the Knesset. Okay, Who's going to look out for them in the Knesset if they're not Mourad, participating and becoming elected? Uh, no, but sorry, I, I mean, we, you are talking about, we are talking about the Islamic movement and you're bringing in uh, quotes from here and there. You can't just uh, 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 it, uh, justify such a decision to ban this uh, very on major uh, uh, movement, political movement that represents a very large a portion of the, of the Arab community by claiming that Sheikh Raid Salah said this. You have to bring real evidence uh, that uh, uh, shows that the Islamic movement has been indeed involved from your website. in targeting or inciting well, against it's Jews or against Israelis. It's from I mean, your website. But, but, just let me finish, please. Let me finish. It's from In fact, your the website. Last, the, the it's from your website. I'll give you violent. something else from Hold your on. website. No, no, okay. no, no, I, no, I, no. I Hold on, Mitchell. Let Muad speak. Le look, and and when and when someone and when someone like Bennett or Lieberman or even Netanyahu or Netanyahu said that anyone who is suspected of throwing stones on soldiers, he can be shot and killed uh, uh, on the spot. I mean, that's cold-blooded murder. That happened about 90 times. About 90 persons, including 18 young men, children were killed. In the last two months only, only okay. because they were suspected of throwing, or because they Mouad, were we planning to move on. I need to, to bring in Mohammed Zedan. You two no are going to bring in Mohammed Zedan now. You, you two have been going hammer and tong for the last five or six minutes. We've only heard from Mohammed once. Uh, Mohammed, just notwithstanding this debate and this argument, um, does yes. this exacerbate tensions? Does it actually do the reverse of what the uh, Benjamin Netanyahu wants or says he wants? I think I think it, uh, and I have to reply to a few things that were said by my colleagues in, in this interview. I think if the uh, uh, participating in the election and participating in the Knesset is the status where, uh, in accordance, you deal with the political parties, there are uh, uh, a lot of Israelis who don't participate in this election and who don't join the Knesset. And secondly, if this is the, uh, the way that you can uh, weight that Israeli democracy by the participation, uh, participation of the Arabs in the Israeli election and the Knesset, I think uh, I, uh, everybody remembers what Benjamin Netanyahu was inciting in, in, the, day, in the day of the election, uh, uh, saying that the Arabs are coming in buses to, to participate and inciting against the participation of Arabs in this very uh, legal and democratic uh, uh, process. So the, the fact that the Islamic movement is not participating in the election uh, is not enough reason to, to say that if you don't participate in the election, you cannot ask for your right. Participation in the election is your right, but also your right is to get adequate and equal rights as citizen, not as participant or non-participant. The second important uh, thing that uh, uh, again, what Israel is trying yeah. to say is trying uh, uh, by making this difference between the South and the North Islamic movement is th and using the Knesset is that saying if you are using, even you are using legal tools to defend your rights and to defend your, uh, your people, 
you are illegitimate in, in if you say anything against Israel, if you are criticizing Israeli policies in Al-Aqsa, and there are millions of things that we can speak about, Israeli violation of rights uh, in, in Al-Aqsa and in Jerusalem and in the occupied territories, you are speaking against the legitimacy of Israel. This okay, is how Mohammed, Netanyahu finish is your point because we're going to have to move on. In a way that I inciting against any political, any political action, uh, this is one, uh, one thing. The second thing, I think that for the Palestinians inside Israel, and I think for also the Islamic movement, uh, uh, the people of the Islamic movement, we will not, as, as a community, as a minority, as part of the Palestinian people, we will not stop our struggle for our rights, either as citizens of the state of Israel or as part of the Palestinian people, and we will find a way to do it regardless of what the Israeli government. It didn't okay, happen in okay. the history. Okay, okay. We have to leave it there. We've only got a few minutes left. Uh, Mitchell, Mitchell Barak, I just to want to bring Mohammed, I'm sorry, we're going to have to move on. We're going to have to move on. We've got three or four minutes left. Uh, Mitchell Barak, isn't it right to say that, that the Israeli security services, Shin Bet, have for years advocated against such a ban? Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm not, I'm not in the Shin Bet, from, but what I've seen in the media uh, corroborates what you're saying, is that they uh, took issue with the prime minister's decision to do that, which is, which is, you know, part of a healthy democracy where the military has one opinion and the... But they're the, the security services. They're the, the people that, they're, that are opinion. paid to you come up with the advice that perhaps like the prime that. minister should listen to. Uh, very often there are debates, healthy debates. It's constructive conflict within within governments you have it in the united states you have it in the uk you have it in france you have it everywhere else sometimes the even sometimes within the security establishment where the the shin bet will say one thing the israeli security services but the army says something else that's healthy isn't that's there a fear that, that uh, if there are hardcore is clear cut and should be stopped isn't there a fear that if there are hardcore activists that, that uh, they will become more radical go underground be harder to police Uh, yeah, but I, th I, think a lot, I think a lot of what's going on here and the problem and what we're seeing in the past eight weeks, meaning, you know, I mean, the Israeli army is, when, when Muad says they're killing 90 suspects, it's not true. But when someone pulls a knife and starts stabbing someone, that's what he's referring to as a suspect, then we can agree. But when someone is in the middle of a terror attack, the army is going to uh, stop that person. What's going on here in a lot of these terror attacks and a lot of what the, where the Islamic movement in the north fits in is the incitement. It's just everything that they say and how they do it. Again, uh, the finest moment in our destiny is when we meet God as Shahids in El Aqsa Mosque. Okay. The streets of Jerusalem. We've, we've, we've been through this. We've been down this path before. We've been down this path before. You've already, you've already things, read. Okay, well, you've made that point. I know, we've but already, when you say those things. We've already made things, that point. We've already right, made that but when point. you say those things and you have a guest. Okay, okay well, and you have a guest that talks about replacing the well, Israeli government. Well, let's hear government from that guest right now. Muad, 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 what is your response to Mitchell? You see what we're dealing with here. Look, I think that when you need to judge someone or an entity, you have to judge them by their uh, actions. And there is, again, no, not even one single concrete piece of evidence that shows that the Islam movement has been involved. I'm one, I want to ask Mitchell, my friend there, who killed Hadil al-Hashlamoun? Killing of a uh, young, uh, um, she was a lady uh, trying to uh, cross at one checkpoint in Al-Khalil, in occupied Al-Khalil. And because she refused to unveil her face, she is a religious woman, and she refused to unveil her face, she was shot and, and killed on the spot, without trial, without nothing, without, without any excuse. And that actually started what, what started the, the last uh, wave of violence. I want to ask Mitchell, how many people were killed? How many Palestinians? About 90. How many Israelis were killed in the last wave of violence? And now you're telling me that there's someone that the Islamic government is inciting. The Islamic government does nothing save we, we or except people, calling two people, people to pray in Al Aqsa Mosque. That's it. And, and, from, and, from Hebron. And, Gentlemen, and, at that point, and, I'm going to cut in. I'm afraid, I'm afraid we have now run out of time. Gentlemen, we have run out of time. We have to move on. I do appreciate all your perspectives on this. We are never going to agree. But the show has come to an end. So thank you very much indeed, Muad Qatab, Michel Barak, and Mohammed Zedan. Thanks very much. And thank you for watching. As always, you can leave your comments on the program's page of our website, aljazeera.com. And you can post your views on facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story or just tweet us at AJ Inside Story. Thanks for watching. From me, Nick Clark, and all the team here, it's bye for now.